Okay, is this working? So I guess I am live now if someone is here to watch, which of course uh, isn't. Uh, so I guess uh, this stream is um, just a spontaneous stream. I am going to change my strings uh, to the new uh, dynamic strings which I got from my string sponsor. Hang around if you want. And I'm going to answer your questions if there will be any questions. Say hello in the chat if you see this. So I'm going to go forward and change my violin strings. I hope I can notice if someone's uh, here and writing in the chat. I know the time I'm going live is really, really strange for you guys in the US. If someone of you is here, it's a strange time to, to watch a stream, of course. So I have currently on my violin still the Pirastro Perpetual Cadenza strings and I'm going to cha change them to the new Dynamo strings and I have also here the Dynamo, Dynamo um, Aluminum D string so here in the normal set I guess it's a silver D string so I'm going to test both and yeah for that i have to put them on my violin of course so i'm going to through this procedure right now and if someone joins and has some questions just let me know i know i'm not a streamer here on youtube um, i'm just basically testing my new camera setup or uh, I have to say my microphone set up. So if you are here and seeing this, you can uh, tell me if the sound is good, if you can understand me well. So, okay, so I will put on the dynamo strings right now in the basic version. That means with the D string, a normal D string, the normal D string, not the aluminum D string. I'm mostly a fan of aluminum D strings. So I guess I would like the alternative D string more, but we will have to find out later if that's the case. So let me check one thing right here. Oh, great. I'm on private. So here we go. So I guess I am live now and also I guess I am uh, now I visible. So it's a I public stream now. I started now uh, talking to myself right also here. So I guess I am uh, now okay. visible. Echo is working. So Great. So I will start from the beginning. Uh, I'm uh, spontaneously live, very spontaneously. 
I haven't planned this for uh, half an hour ago, but I just uh, set up my new microphone, which is a Sheps microphone, um, which is sponsored, sponsored to me. Really grateful for that. It's a great, great microphone. Um, so I'm testing that right now. And I also wanted to change my strings. As you can see, one string is already gone. This is here uh, the G string of the Pirastro Perpetual Cadenza set. And I will change to the new Dynamo strings right now. So uh, if you can hear me, uh, say hello in the chat. Um, just to, for me to check if the audio is uh, great. I know the time I'm going live is not really a time to go live. It's uh, here, it's uh, in the middle of the day. One can say, I don't know how it is in the regions you are watching from. So I'm going to continue to change my strings right here. And if you have some questions, oh, hello. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I can't, Nguyen. I hope I didn't butcher your name. And Justin, hello, hello to both of you. Thanks for uh, writing in the chat. You're my two first commentators here on this live. Uh, and I guess my last life was two years back. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know, um, violent related. And uh, also, um, is the sound good? Can you understand me well? Is everything working? Because I, I really don't know. I, I haven't been live for such a long time. So I'm going to go uh, through the pro process of changing my strings. I always um, take this opportunity to wipe my um, fingerboard a little bit. I'm using some uh, deodorant, I wanted to say. It's a, a perfume, um, yeah. It's like a perfume for grannies. So to say it's uh, quite quite cheap and it's uh, high in alcohol. So um, you can clean your fingerboard with that. I always do that when I change my strings. So I have here, you can see where the G string was. You can actually see in the camera <laughs> right here, the marks of my playing. Uh, I, I can't remember playing up there on the G string, but I guess I did that. So now I'm going to wipe that and then put on the new, new G string the, from the Dynamo set. So guys, if you have, have any questions, just write in the um, chat. I'm trying to talk to you uh, while changing the strings. And um, yeah, use this opportunity if you want. Uh, you can also ask some questions like, why aren't you uploading one video a week? And yeah, no, now I... I um, ask myself this question and uh, I'm telling you, yeah, I'm working also as a violin teacher in my country, in my town. And uh, yeah, that, uh, took, that takes a lot of time. And I have to say the videos take a lot of time as well. You have noticed uh, 30 to 40 minute videos. Um, yeah, that's a lot of editing which go into that. So now I have cleaned the fingerboard under the G string, as you can see. And now I'm changing to the Dynamo G string. So let's see how that turns out. So if you guys can let me know if the audio is good, that would be great. I guess it's good because I listened to the stream here as well. But uh, feedback is always uh, very welcome. And also, how are you guys doing? Have, do you uh, have a great day? One thing, when, when I put on new strings, I always uh, add some pack soap to the packs and I will do that now with the G string pack. This is this one right here. 
I just apply it a little bit. Sometimes I also clean the packs when changing the strings, but I do that like every third time I change the strings. The, the packs don't have to be that clean. It is more important that they are fitted correctly and that they are soaped with some pack soap regularly. And with regularly, I mean like once half a year or so. If they fit it, if they are fitted correctly, it's always um, you're eating. Just in yeah, then uh, uh, how do you say in English? Uh, bon appetit, bon appetit. Uh, that's f French and with a heavy German accent. <clears throat> so now the pack is uh, running smoothly, uh, which it did before as well, because well-fitted pets uh, pack. Pets, packs, um, usually run smoothly. So I'm now going to attach the new string up here. Always being careful to do the winding correctly so that the winding pulls the pack inside of the pack box. A little crossover. What are you eating, Justin? I love to eat. I, I love to cook and I love to eat. Ah, okay. You have to go. See you and uh, thanks for stopping by. So now... that easy to put the g-string in the tail piece sometimes they are a little bit thick in the wi winding okay now it worked another thing i do when i change strings is i put a little bit of um graphite or yeah just a lead pencil uh right here or graphite pencil just for the string to run smoothly and don't damage the string if there would be some sharp edges and at the nut as well. So, and then we put the string on. Good, so that was the G string. And I will continue now with the other strings. Always, um, when you put on new strings, you could go over the actual pitch of the note because the string goes down in pitch very fast anyways. But uh, that is not recommended by the string man manufacturers as well because the string is, is produced or made uh, for a specific tension. And if you go over that tension, that is not very beneficial for the string. So that's why you should always tune up to the pitch you want to go, which is in our case, uh, the A is uh, 440 or 442 um, or 43 or 46 Hertz. And then accordingly, you adjust to the other strings as well. So now I will do the same what I did with the G string. I will clean the fingerboard right here and you can see also I did some uh, some moving over that fingerboard. So I take my my paper uh, or my towel right here and this was from the G-string by the way. This here. This is from the G-string. So it is uh, quite quite some dirt on the fingerboard after playing the strings half a year and only wiping it with a dry towel. Okay, uh, thanks for um, saying that, Oxos, uh, Foxo. Um, I can try to adjust the audio. Um, so it's not loud enough. Let me go a little bit higher then. So now it should be a little bit higher. 
and also I could go even higher but um, let me check so my, maybe it's better now I, I guess it's better now I don't know if it's good now so please is, uh, if you if you can tell me in the chat that would be great I'm not going live so often so it's better okay it's still not very loud I had the problem before as well so um, I guess I have to check some tricks or some settings I leveled out the microphone uh, for um, the sound of the violin and the violin of course is quite loud look at that that's disgusting just from the fingerboard which looked clean or fairly clean and if you level something out for an instrument of course uh, if you start speaking then your speaking voice is um, a little bit too yeah too quiet so I will give it a second run on the G string with some alcohol under the D string on the fingerboard of course okay it's better cleaner now so and now I'm going to put on the D string and as I said in the beginning of the stream um, this is here the set of the dynamo strings this is the D string and it's a silver D string I'm not a big fan of silver D strings Ray has two mics for his lives I think one for his was oh yeah that's smart and one for the violin yeah and then he forgets to switch I know that problem uh, from recording my videos and uh, yeah that's why I always level a little bit down and usually I use the setup to uh, record my videos which I will do in uh, after the stream I will uh, watch the um, two set violin um, uh, D minor Bach concerto and um, yeah and when I record I can after I recorded this uh, I can put the low levels up and yeah that uh, that ran me in problems as well but uh, it works for recordings and with a good microphone it works quite well so uh, that you don't have to worry about clipping and uh, when you play the um, violin and when you speak you just speak and uh, afterwards you um, raise the level of the speaking parts it's a little bit more in the editing process of course and it doesn't work for life so yeah that's a good a very good tip um, with two microphones I actually have two microphones right here so uh, but um, yeah as I said it's a spontaneous stream I can also try if it it's better maybe a little bit louder as well but now if I now would uh, start playing the violin which I will do later I will um, tune it of course then uh, yeah your ears will bleed potentially I don't know maybe it's also the distance from the microphone I didn't know that Ray uh, does live streams it's uh, very interesting I'm not following him on YouTube uh, but I'm following him off on um, Instagram I guess but I guess also on Instagram he doesn't uh, have the big setup running uh, more like a spontaneous setup with his mobile phone so maybe I had I have to check that out and learn from him learn from the greats so now the A string is going on uh, I'm sorry the D string the silver D string again applying some some lead or uh, graphite at the nut and at the bridge 
just for the string to run extra smooth. He promotes tonic. Mm -hmm. Practice sessions with other musicians. Okay, that's interesting. I uh, have to... Uh, practice sessions uh, sounds, of course, uh, very, very um, interesting for me as a musician because, um, yeah, it's uh, quite... Uh, you can learn so much if you watch um, professionals practicing and rehearsing. If that is what uh, Ray Chen does, that's amazing. I have to follow him. It's on YouTube or... Uh, did you say where it is? A uh, practice app, yeah, I guess I guess it, it would be an app because there are so many apps right now. <clears throat> Great. <coughs> so my camera shut up off. Give me a second. Professional stream right here. That could not go any worse, but yeah, I'm here uh, for changing my strings, basically. Yes, on YouTube. Uh, okay, that's good to know. So maybe I have to follow him then on YouTube. There was a time where I, um, sorry, I was very close to the microphone. There was a time where I was um, unfollowing many violin youtubers because i always uh, when i see other violinists put out so much content it's it's like a uh, you you feel sometimes a little bit yeah you are behind so uh, they have so much content and you can see they have editors and um yeah it's some, sometimes frustrating if you don't have so much time to make your videos. I, ha I have some time to make my videos, but I'm completely on my own one-man army right here. So I um, always have to do everything like the setup and um, yeah, the content, of course, and the ideas. So now D string and G string are on. Oh, sorry. Is it clipping? Yeah, it's clipping a little bit. So G string and D string is on. I'm now going to change the A string. <clears throat> I was the last days quite happy with the old strings, even though they are uh, like a year old or something. Um, the old strings were the Perpetual Cadenza strings, which I made a review about. And in the review, I, I told it's uh, not a string for soloists and um, if you have to project, but uh, it's a great string actually if you play alone. So um, later um, this week, I practiced some Bach and had a little bit of time. Uh, and if you have time to practice, of course, you you're gonna uh, play better. And um, the strings uh, always sounded uh, very nice, I, th I thought. <clears throat> For some solo Bach. So I see sometimes uh, some, uh, I have four uh, viewers now, three now, okay. Say hello in the chat. If you are there, say hello. And if you have some questions, any questions, just ask. I'm here now for changing my strings mainly, but I want to look at the chat as well. And if someone has a question, just go for it. A 
lot of dirt on this fingerboard. Even though I'm trying to be very clean with my violin. So I'm now applying some pack soap again for the A string pack. Which I don't use, by the way. I use a uh, fine tuner for the A string. Most violinists uh, use only fine tuner for the E string. But um, I think it's very good if you want to to tune your A, uh, which is of course the note you compare with other instruments as well. As well, it's very important to be very precise and sometimes the pegs get stuck or uh, yeah if you are on stage uh, sometimes the light on the stage is so warm that the wood of the peg box is <laughs> some some kind of struggle to tune and uh, yeah that's why i just put a fine tuner right here for the a string and of course for the e string as well just for convenience because i think it's um it doesn't hurt to have a uh, fine tuner for the A string. You don't want to have too many fine tuners because uh, they can produce uh, or, or they can be a source for rattling noises. So I, I'm applying a little bit of graphite here at the bridge and at the nut. I once had this um, occasion that Good morning, Wendy. Yeah, we are all violent champions. That's great. Uh, what I wanted to tell you is uh, I once had a situation when I was at the violin maker and um, the violin maker uh, changed strings for me, um, which I usually do myself. But at that time I had some adjustments made. I think the nut, this nut was uh, also um, maybe a new one i put on a new one a higher one because the old one was a little bit too low and in the process of putting on the new string set which i bought also at the violin maker it uh, one string i think it was the a string got damaged so it was ruined uh, because this groove right here was a little bit edgy and uh, damaged the string and yeah then I had to buy another string and I of course wasn't that happy about that but I um, think we learn from that mistakes and next time first of all uh, I put on my strings myself and I always make sure that those grooves are of course um, free from some cracks or some sharp edges and also I use some um, not pack soap, uh, but uh, graphite to prevent some damage to the strings. Always check your bridge when you put on no new strings uh, because uh, the tension which you pull from here can sometimes um, make the bridge lean a little bit towards uh, the scroll and um, that is something you don't want in uh, opposite it's it should be uh, here a uh, rectangular is it the right word word and um, therefore leaning uh, a little bit back Yeah, I saw that uh, with many violinists um, uh, that Eddie used uh, two fine tuners uh, doesn't surprise me because he's smart. Oh, that's a lot of tension. The D and the G felt very smooth. A string has a lot of tension. This is uh, the new Dynamo strings, which
which I'm just putting on right now. Thanks camera to focus. Ah, perpendicular. Thanks. Ah, a rectangle is... Uh, I have to Google it. A rectangle is a tri not a tri... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know what a rectangle is now. I'm learning. So, we have now G string, D string, A string. Okay, the sound is not clipping. That's good. Okay. And now comes the last string to change, which is the E string. Dynamo, again, wrong direction. Please, focus. I know you can focus. Yeah. Okay, um, what do we have here? Carbon steel, which is uh, quite usual for E strings. Let me check one thing. The A string has a tension of 5.5 kilograms kg. Let me check one thing. I want to know if the Pirastro Perpetual strings have more tension. Of course, they will not have more tension, um, the Perpetual Cadenza strings, but I want to check how much less it is. So the Cadenza A string, it's not much, it's uh, 5.4 kg um, of tension on the Perpetual Cadenza A string and this A string which felt quite um, strong in tension is 5.5 kg. So it's a small difference but so here comes the E string. Uh, I still have to wipe the fingerboard If you have any questions violin related, just go forward and uh, go for it and write in the chat if you want. After this live stream, I'm going to um, record um, the new video. I forgot to put uh, off the string. There's too, too much going on right now. I'm trying to read chat. I'm trying to change strings. I'm trying to talk. So always be careful when you use some alcohol for cleaning because you uh, don't want to touch uh, the varnish of the instrument because the varnish of the violin is um, yeah, it's hard to, uh, for me to explain in English. Alcohol can damage the varnish of the violin. I have to look up some vocabulary. So I'm here cleaning the E string and trying to put on the new one. Ah, okay. It's a German uh, comment. I try to. Um, to translate, uh, so he says, um, I should try the to change the Dynamo E, which I'm now going to put on, um, with the Peter Infeld um, Platinum E string, and combine the set the Dynamo set with the Peter Infeld Platinum E, and the G string sounds better. He said, uh, Dance Moto. I yeah I. Ich weiß nicht genau, wie man deinen Namen ausspricht. Uh, tut mir leid. Um, ja, danke für deinen uh, Kommentar. Thank you for your comment. So. Now I have also to, to switch uh, between the languages. 
I'm happy that I didn't put on the uh, incorrect strings until now. I'm always uh, interested in combining different E strings with um, with string sets. It's very um, interesting um, to see the impact of the E string on a whole set, on the sound of the whole set. And uh, what you said correctly is um, that the G string can very often benefit from uh, a different E string. The G string, the lowest string can benefit from a different E string. That's a little bit strange, but um, it is also my experience, uh, what I experienced so far. So let me now grab the E string right here. I always remove this uh, plastic part right here because I have on my on my bridge I have a little bit of a protection there so I don't need that too and it makes noise if I leave it on. It was really easy to um, remove. Sometimes it's harder to remove and uh, with some strings it even damaged when I tried to remove that from an E string, it even damaged the winding of the string and uh, therefore the whole string when I removed it. As for E strings, by the way, I um, I used to play a lot of Yaga E strings. Oh, I forgot to take the the ball out right here. I hope it's easy to take that ball out. Sometimes it's easy. I did it with one hand. So just a tip for you. If you um, are playing, okay, now it's gone. Um, if you are playing um, with a fine tuner, which uh, needs a sling right here, um, you can remove the ball always uh, from most string sets. Um, quite easily if you just press down the sling and remove the ball. So when I order strings, I always order, of course, the sling E string, because I know that I don't need the ball E string for my fine tuner. But uh, those strings were sent to me by uh, polycord.com, which is my <laughs> Uh, which is my uh, sponsor for violin strings um, and I'm very thankful for them and um, I ordered strings from them way before they started sponsoring me. I was um, in my study times I was playing a lot of gut strings, wound gut strings um, and I played a very special string um, which was the stiff olive, pirastro olive strings. Okay, that's what, what uh, was the incorrect order, the Pirastro Olive Stiff G and D string. And those strings have a, an, an amazing sound, really amazing sound. I want to try them at one day on my violin as well. <clears throat> Just in the, la uh, the last years, <clears throat> I uh, didn't want to try anything else than uh, one time I tried uh, gut strings, but the tuning is is really is I, I can't cope with that. Oh, that was too much. Okay, I have the whole set. I will tune it uh, soon. Let me just uh, check what you guys, guys are writing. What is your background training in violin? Um, I have a very, um, yeah, that's a long story, of course. Um, I'm now um, 37 years old. Um, and I started playing the violin when I was eight, which is not very early, but it is um, also the age you start usually in Germany. 
if if I would be born in Russia, maybe I would have started with uh, three years, or if I was uh, would have been born in uh, China, or uh, yeah, I would have started maybe with one year, um, because I wanted to play the violin uh, when I first heard it, and I um, found uh, um, a great teacher, and yeah, that uh, um, she taught me until I was. Um, ready to study so to say i failed the um, first audition the first year after my um, abitur in germany it's my um, high school college uh, thing i always mix up those those uh, words um yeah after my school i tried to apply for um, music university and then i got rejected and i uh, practiced one year um, got lessons from my teacher, free lessons, by the way. She was um, giving me free lessons because, um, yeah, let's say that uh, my family is not, uh, my, my family is not poor, but uh, it is a lot of uh, money, of course, uh, which goes into um, the education besides the school. And my school was also um, not a free school, so um, my parents have to pay for that. As well, and so um, my um, violin teacher knew that uh, there were some uh, financial problems, and she uh, just taught me for free until I got to study in university. And the second year, I made three auditions in different cities, and um, also different um, different kinds of uh, study. So the first year, I wanted to be a orchestra player. And I felt that audition the second year I applied for being a music teacher. And uh, I, I made that and I uh, was successful there. Um, and also in my city. So I had to stay in the same city, which was uh, quite, quite nice. And the music school here is also quite nice. <laughs> it's uh, Hanover, Hanover, Hanover um, University, Music University. And uh, yeah, then I studied there with uh, three different teachers in total. I switched two, two, two times. Um, one time because I was not so happy. And the second time because I just wanted a change. And there was a great teacher um, who was new at that school. And yeah, then I studied there approximately six years. I have to drink a little bit of water talking so much. And yeah, in the end, um, I changed again the teacher. Um, and that's basically it. I made a di diploma in uh, Germany. It's called uh, Now Different. It's now a master. Um, but uh, I graduated, or um, I, I don't know if that's the right word, uh, in the year 2011. And I'm a certified violin teacher. Yeah, and that's what I do. I teach the violin uh, as a main job and uh, also I play. When I get the opportunity, um, I don't play in an orchestra or something, but uh, I like to play in ensembles. But also I have to say, playing in free ensembles or bands is always a little bit of a hustle. You always have to to organize a lot, and someone has to be the one who organizes. And um, also musically, the direction uh, can be um, with different musicians all, always a little bit going like this. I have also strong opinions on on music, and sometimes I um, yeah, I think it's good to um, have have some input from other other musicians always and uh, never just play alone but i really enjoy playing alone i really enjoy playing bach solo works and um, also i enjoy uh, playing of course with other musicians but in the long term it didn't work out uh, so great until now i had a um, tango band classical quartets two of uh, those 
yeah, that's basically my background training. Uh, that was a long answer. <laughs> I also did some masterclasses after my studies um, in Finland. Uh, I wanted to go to the US to study in New York because my latest teacher, she went to New York, but uh, I tried to save up some money and uh, yeah, I, I was uh, <laughs> not even close to uh, be able uh, to pay one semester. Uh, which is half a year in, in New York at uh, the Queen's College where uh, she teached and uh, where she taught or still teaches. Um, she's a great teacher. Um, by the way, her, her name is uh, Lara Liv. Lara Liv with the V in the end. She's a great teacher. Really great. Hard, but uh, that's, I think, a quality sometimes. And she's now uh, teaching at Juilliard School, I read somewhere. So uh, she went from Hanover uh, over to New York, Queens College, and now she has some uh, some opportunity to teach also in the Juilliard School. So that was my teacher who wanted me to come to the US after my studies um, and study there with her. But um, yeah, I had to pay like 15,000 per half a year, plus rent for a place and so on. And that is not so easy to to collect the money. <laughs> Doing a good job uh, of keeping up with everything, Wendy, thanks. Um, yeah, <laughs> the violin is laying here, the new strings are on, I have to uh, tune them. Uh, but it's actually not bad to, to do that uh, slowly. Um, as you uh, have noticed, maybe I'm checking uh, from time to time the strings and I'm checking, uh, yeah, they go down and I put them up a little bit. When I start playing, they drop so much. But this is a, a synthetic core set, of course, the strings will be, I hope, in tune, uh, stable in tune in some minutes or so. What about uh, Baroque? bow. Uh, I'm, I'm calling you Foxo right now. Um, Baroque. Uh, I, I tried Baroque bows. Um, I'm a big, big believer in good violin bows. Um, so I have quite a good bow right here. This is a uh, um, Thomas Gerbet uh, violin bow. Um, he um, lives in Vienna and uh, builds his bows uh, there. It is um, a new, uh, a living maker. And I found a similar bow from him. Um, yeah, when I was actually looking for a violin in Hamburg, Germany. And I was so amazed by the other, the other bow, uh, which I have a, also a long story to, uh, um, so that I didn't buy a, a violin but a bow and it was uh, not a cheap bow um, yeah but that bow got damaged so uh, it wasn't my uh, fault it was uh, the fault of the um, I won't say uh, whose fault it was let's say it was damaged um, during um, delivery um, back from the bow maker to me after I uh, wanted to get the um, rehair done and also some adjustments and yeah it, it came to me and it looked uh, it was broken I uh, could show you uh, maybe later it is uh, up there I still have the stick I want to repair it when I get uh, some uh, time and money for that it's uh, not a cheap repair um, and um, I have um, the, the bow maker made me this uh, new bow um, as a compensation because it uh, happened f on the way from him back to me it was on on his end basically uh, yeah and I'm, I'm very I was very very sad my old bow was amazing it's an amazing stick as I said uh, it's laying on the shelf right there um, looking very sad broken and um, yeah it's a better stick uh, than this one this one is also a good bow but very different, very different. He told me he can build me a bow which is the same 
as my old bow as he is also copying bows. Wood is always different. It's sometimes it's it's more stiff. It's it's not the same. the The playing is not the same. The sound is not the same. And what was the best thing about my old bow was the sound. The sound was amazing. It was uh, just uh, the feeling of uh, you put the bow on the string and it's very special, very special to other bows. And Baroque bows I tried, but I have a problem. They are a little bit shorter and um, you have to get adjusted to them very well. And I enjoy to play the tourte, the modern bows, modern bows. Um, yeah. So I'm not a little bit. Uh, I'm not so much into this um, historical, historically informed performance practice, the hip practice. Um, although I am very interested in trying that out, but I think if you have a baroque bow, you also need a violin with gut strings, wound gut strings, or even plain gut strings, and you. Then, if you want to go uh, really hardcore, you also need a different bridge. You need a um, baroque bridge, and then also the fingerboard is different f uh, with the old uh, violins. The original form of the fingerboard, it's a different wood, it's lighter, and the angle is uh, different of the, the neck. Of course, I will not change my violin for that, and if I put on... If I put on... Uh, Gut strings, I still enjoy playing with the modern bow. So I had to get a second setup, a whole second setup uh, for, for playing uh, in the Baroque style. And that uh, doesn't make sense for me. Yeah, I, I think the Baroque bows are fascinating, of course, yeah. I, I played one once, but uh, my arms are very long, <laughs> and I always uh, made the tip. I made the tip go like like this, and uh, it was a little bit dangerous. Um, yeah. Okay, let me check the new Dynamo strings. So the sound is terrible. Okay, let me adjust it a little bit so I can play loudly. The sound is good. I, I turned it down a little bit, otherwise it would be clipping. strings. I can say that uh, the, the first impression is always um, important and uh, they have a sizzle, uh, a little sizzle, sizzle and really powerful, much more powerful than my old strings, uh, the perpetual cadenza st strings. I play viola and whenever w I see an E string I think it's go going to snap because of uh, how thin it is. For me it is uh, when I put on the strings, 
the new strings, what I, what I did uh, right now, uh, always turning uh, the, the peg and uh, making sure the pitch is correctly um, adjusted. Um, that is the moment where I think uh, it snaps any moment. And uh, back in the day when I was young and uh, started changing my own strings, I snapped some strings and I can imagine it, it was uh, most likely the E strings. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I had to put on, on the volume now uh, up. I have two microphones, but uh, when I would, would use two microphones, I'm very sure I would also forget to switch between the microphones. So this is what I just put on my violin, the Dynamo strings, the new strings. Of course, I'm uh, doing a um, review um, later. I'm uh, going to play um, a sound sample later for my camera and later for you guys, of course. Um, I always do that. Um, I always post that on my Instagram because it's just a scale up and down um, just to catch this this first moment uh, of a new string um, so that you can compare that later. And um, then I will play those strings. Um, I, I have some time to play in the summer holidays, uh, which start in, I think, four weeks here in Germany. And then I will also record some songs uh, with that and with my new microphone. Yeah, and I'm very excited. By the way, the microphone, the new microphone, If you are a little bit into recording stuff, you might ask you uh, yourself now, why the hell does he have this microphone? And um, this is a dream microphone for recording. Actually, it's, it's uh, the same company um, supplies the um, Berlin Philharmonic um, Digital Concert Hall, which is a um, digital concert hall where they um, broadcast their performances. It's uh, the same company as this microphone right here. Of course, in this room right here and uh, everything, uh, the, the conditions could be more optimal. But uh, for me, it's amazing to have this microphone right now. It's um, not mine, but uh, we have a, um, a partnership, so to say, uh, ships and me as the, the violin channel. Um, yeah, and uh, I will make some videos for them and of course talk about the microphone. But this microphone, uh, this company was recommended to me years ago when I talked to someone who is into recording and um, he is a professional and he, he told me there's two companies for um, microphones and one is Sheps, which is this one. Um, this is a small condenser microphone and the, uh, the other com company is Brauner, also a German company, uh, but they make uh, more big condenser microphones, large condenser. I, I, I'm not sure about uh, the correct names, but um, yeah, large microphones and this company makes small microphones and uh, those are the top standards. Of course, there's also Neumann, Sennheiser and so on. But uh, to professionals, um, if the budget is not, it's not an, um, a hindering factor, uh, those are the two go-tos. What about Eastman School of Music, Rochester, New York? It must cost less than New York City, although you receive, uh, you revert teachers not there, ever consider Eastman. Yeah, um, I'm not sure about um, even if it costs less. Um, let's say my uh, my teacher um, was at um, Queens College, which is also not Juilliard School. So it was 
already a little bit cheaper. Um, but generally in the US, you pay for your studies. In Germany, you don't pay for your studies. So you can study music in Germany or anything else, but music you have to apply for, you have to um, make the audition, but then you can study for basically free. You pay uh, some yearly fee for uh, using the um, the train of the city and uh, some some benefits uh, you get as a, s a student. You even get uh, cheaper entries in the theater, um, but it's basically free. So um, yeah, the difference is quite big, just depending on the country. And if you are from Europe and you want to study in the US, you don't apply to most of the, um, how can you say, it's, it's uh, like fundraising or um, some programs that they help you um, with the cost of the, the studies. You just don't apply for that. And there are some from Europe, but they are so small. It's, it's just a small amount of what you have to pay. And um, I don't like debt. Uh, I, I don't like to um, lend money. money and uh, I think that is a good thing. And even though studying is very important, I, I have my diploma here in Germany, so um, the thing going to the US and living there, it, it, it would have cost too much. Just living there is, is too much. Um, but thanks for the suggestion. Uh, now I'm 37 or 38. I, I'm always forgetting, forgetting. So I'm not going to study anymore. Maybe I, I will go attend some master classes if, if there is a great teacher coming to Germany or uh, to Europe somewhere where I can go to. Any recommendations on what to listen to in uh, Berlin Philharmonic's digital concert hall? I had, um, yes, I have some recommendations, uh, but it's a long time ago that I used their service. Um, probably is it's a lot of great concerts there they they should sponsor me really i i could talk so so great about them they don't sponsor sponsor me by the way but uh it's a such a great uh platform what i would recommend for you if you are a violinist or um, string player um i was a really big fan of leonidas cavacos um back in the day i'm i'm now yeah, sometimes I, I like his performances, but I like his old performances. Um, not when he was really young, but uh, yeah, the more mature ones um, or even the really young ones are great. But now he, he plays a little bit more, I, I have the feeling, for show effect. Um, but at the time he recorded the Beethoven Violin Concerto with the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. Um, that is, uh, you you will not find it any better. This orchestra is great and he played that great. Um, so Kavakos and also um, the conductor was Zubin Mehta, uh, who I think is one of the best conductors when it comes to accompanying a soloist. If you, um, he, he played a lot with, with the greats, of course, of uh, our time. He played with, um, Horowitz even, I think. That's a recording of uh, Vladimir uh, Horowitz, um, the pianist. And uh, he is accompanied by Zubin Mehta when he was young. And it's always like the best, the best accompaniment you can get. And that's the combination there. Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, Zubin Mehta as a conductor, I think. I, I might be mistaken, but I think it's Zubin Mehta as a conductor and then uh, Leonidas Kavakos as a soloist with the Beethoven Violin Concerto. Really amazing. Especially the third movement is, uh, is memorable. Really. Scholarship, yeah, that's, that's the thing I uh, searched for at that time. So uh, I, get, I got some uh, scholarship actually in Germany too because there was a time when I was studying that uh, studies here in Germany started costing, costing more and uh, they changed that. 
<laughs> after I stopped studying, after I was finished studying, they changed that back so it's uh, cheaper again. But at the time uh, I studied, there was uh, a little bit of an increase and um, I, I did uh, get a scholarship for, I think, one year, which is two semesters. Yeah, it, it was for me, it was also a free trial. So uh, um, that's why I, I don't use it so much. I always use it when I have a free trial and um, yeah, but there was something else too, but um, I recommend you if you want to listen to soloists, search for the soloist's name and the conductor uh, Zubin Mehta. If he has some other um, concerts with the Berlin Philharm Philharmonic Orchestra, I can assure you, uh, you will not be disappointed. I, I once visited uh, the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra in person. Um, I went to a concert there and it was also the program, the, the um, people um, was just uh, out of this world. So that's also why I had to go there. It was um, the Elga Violin Concerto played by Pinchas Zuckermann and conducted uh, by Zubi Mehta with the Berlin, Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra in the Berlin Philharmonic Hall, which is a great hall. It's a, um, one of the top concert halls in the world and really acoustically well balanced and the violin sounded amazing there. So there's an echo which is uh, very optimized for uh, classical music. Really amazing. So I can just recommend to you uh, using the Berlin Philharmonic uh, Digital Concert Hall. It's a great source and they always offer some kind of a seven day free trial. Um, I, I get that, uh, that um, advertisement uh, a lot from them. So free, free seven days trial or something. So thank you guys all for being here. I changed my strings. It's now done and I am now going to um, check out the D minor um, violin concerto by Bach, played by Brett Young and Eddie Chen. But I'm not going to do that live. I'm going to do that now and um, make a YouTube video for you guys and uh, I'm very excited. I love this concerto. I love uh, to play it. And yeah. So my average view dura duration of the stream is four minutes and 20 seconds. Okay. Thank you all for stopping by. And um, thank you all for your questions. Uh, I love it if you are active in the chat, uh, when you are active in the chat. And um, see you guys next time. Maybe I will go live uh, some other day as well. Um, it was a great fun and stay tuned for the next video. Bye bye.